Greetings, everyone. This tutorial is about being productive, even when you don't feel like working on music. So, sorry, da, you gotta go for this tutorial. So, what do you do when you're not in the mood to produce or mix? What happens when the muse is gone on a coffee break and you're sitting in the studio staring at the wall? When that happens to me, I do what I call grunt work. That is, I work on things that don't take much talent to do, but they need to be done. Things like listening to your samples and taking the ones out that you'll never use or sounds that sound too similar. Let me just guess here, but you probably have about 800 or more drum samples that you've downloaded from some site and you're ready to make a track. Here's a few questions to ask yourself when using samples of any type. One thing you should ask yourself is, do you know how the samples were recorded? Did the producer use signal processors to get more oomph or clarity from the samples? Or were they recorded without effects, which is called a dry recording? If they are already processed, then you add more EQ, compression, etc. You could be, and I'm betting you are, taking the life out of the original sound you liked in the beginning. What bitrate are the samples? Are the samples recorded in mono and stereo? These are things you need to ask yourself and also find out. A very important question to ask yourself is, are these samples legal to use? It may sound silly, but the laws on sampling are still very confusing and people are under the assumption that using a one-hit sample is okay to use. Well, it's hard to say, but uh, most of the time, if you're caught, you could be in some legal trouble. Now remember, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't guide you one way or the other. But it is doubtful that you will get sued. But a cease and desist order means you have to take down a song or songs you've had on the internet. And all this time you promoted that song, and now you've just gone? And you're back to square one. One thing with finding samples on the website is, sure the files say that they're 44.1 sample rate and 16-bit. But are they really? You have no idea how many people have uploaded and downloaded that file to one another and how many times it's been converted or changed in some way without you knowing. Your best alternative? Eh, it sounds cliche, but you have to buy your samples so you know that you're getting the first generation of samples. You also know how they're produced and you will know if they're illegal to use or if you need to submit material to the production company because some production companies do not allow for commercial use of their samples. Or some samples are royalty free, which means that they can be used in any way except you can't sell those samples. Now ask yourself, do I really need 600 kicks, snares, hi-hats, and all of that? Although it may be tempting to have every sample imaginable, you're doing yourself more injustice than anything. You'll be spending days trying to find the right kick or snare for the song, going through all those samples. Your best bet is to do two things to help save you time and energy in the future, as well as help your productions a ton. Number one, learn how to sculpt drum sounds so you understand more on how each sound works. The thump of the kick, the snap of the snare, the hiss of the hi-hats. This way you can start making your own sounds that are in your head instead of searching for the one that sounds just right. Number two, narrow your drum samples to around 50 or less of each type of samples. As in, 50 kick samples, 50 snare samples, 50 open hi-hat samples, 50 crush samples, I can go on and on, you know what I mean. Make sure that each one is very different than the other one, so you have a full, well-rounded amount. From here, you can sculpt those samples to sound more like what you want or keep them as is. Doing those two things will help your production time and quality in numerous ways, as well as helping you use your newly acquired programs, synth, and VSTs that deal with sculpting drums and percussion. Now, back to other grunt work you can do to help speed up your future productions. Another very important thing to do while not filling your muse is to make a generic DAW template for different genres that you work in so you can quickly start a new track without worrying of having to set up redundant things like 
EQing for most sounds, a kick side chain onto the bass line, and many other little parts that can already be set up and ready to tweak so your muse won't have to wait on you setting up a template that gets fit into the genre that you want to work on. One very overlooked chore to do when producing is to back up your system. No matter how boring it is to do, it is very vital for you to back up your files, as your songs, your samples, project files, pictures, you name it. If it's important to you, back it up at least once a month, once every other month. If you can back it up to two different formats, let's say a DVD or the cloud or a separate external hard drive, it's better because one format could go bad. Not everything lasts forever. Even hard drives, including solid state, have a lifespan. And those range from two to three months all the way to 20 to 30 years. And cloud space only lasts as long as you can pay for it. Believe me, I've lost many a song and important files due to not backing up monthly. Now, it's just a simple task that I know can save me a heartache in the future. Lastly, do research on a VST or a VSTI that's new to you or you just haven't dived deep enough into. The more you know how to use your gear properly, the easier music production will be. So that leaves you with even more time to experiment and have fun in your productions instead of toiling with a piece of gear you know little about. I hope these ideas help you with your future productions and the overall speed that it takes to finish a track that has the right amount of energy and clarity. If you enjoy my tutorials, please subscribe to me on YouTube. Would you like to chat with other music producers from all over the world about music production and get instant feedback on your music? You can if you watch my live video stream on Twitch every Tuesday through Friday 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash kinetic distortion. You can also find more tutorials and tips on music production at kineticdistortion.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in my chat room soon.